we started at nine o'clock this morning in Eureka. We were in uh, Lincoln at noon, and we're here in McDonough County today. And uh, this is going to be the last event today. We, we head home after this. We are uh, running in a district that was purposefully designed to be a very red district, a very safe, conservative Republican district. And I think there are many who would imagine that this is a district that will always be in the hands of the Republican Party. I don't think anybody can make that claim this time. I don't think anybody can make that claim this year. We're looking at a different electoral climate than we've ever seen in our lifetimes. Conventional wisdom can be thrown out the window. Nothing that we think works seems to be working this time around. Now, I'm running against Darren LaHood, who's the incumbent congressman. He's been in the position since September, about eight months or so that he's been there. Uh, he's running for his first, two, uh, first full two-year term. One of the things that I'd like to say right from the start is this is not a campaign where I have personal animosity against Darren LaHood. Uh, as far as I know, he's a pretty fine man. And I respect his willingness to, to be involved in public life, to be involved in public service. It's an important uh, job that individuals have to be willing to take on. My concern with the congressman has to do with the positions that he has taken over the years, the positions that the Republican Party has held for the past generation. And I believe that the congressman needs to defend his positions, defend the policies of the Republican Party, and explain why those policies are necessarily in the best interest of working people, poor people, people who are struggling here in the 18th Illinois. One of the things that we intend to do is to debate the congressman on every possible opportunity that we get. We want him to defend point by point his positions. We're willing to go toe to toe with the congressman on this, and on this point, we'll be relentless. You can't govern with photo ops and sound bites only. You have to explain what's in your gut. You have to explain what you stand for. And standing for the conveyor belt of incumbency, standing for having a million dollar war chest that can support you in any campaign, standing on the likelihood that we see the foundations of a new Republican dynasty forming here in Central Illinois. Those ideas may well have worked in previous election cycles. I don't think that anyone running for Congress this time around can assume that the same process will be functional, will, will be working. And so we intend to run an issues-based campaign, a campaign that is rooted in what is going to be in the best interest of serving the residents of this district. Now, we're here in McDonough County. And, you know, I, I don't know how familiar you all are, but I, I'm a history professor, and I've actually taught some courses in the history of the uh, state of Illinois. And one of the things that I learned a bit back is that in the early 1970s, this part of the state had an interesting episode of secession, <laughs> or attempted secession. Uh, so we are here in the heart of Oregonia. <laughs> in fact, we, on, on the drive over here, we passed near the capital of Oregonia, coming here to uh, to home. One of the things that we must remember, in all seriousness, is that in the modern economy, no area can be can deserve to be forgotten. No one deserves to be marginalized. Everyone should have an opportunity for success in America. Success that is going to be determined by your willingness to work hard, to struggle, to do what you have to do, but you should be able to make it if you're willing to engage in the process. Each one of us has been brought up believing that in America, that dream of American opportunity is you work hard and you'll find success. The truth of the matter is we know much better than that. We live in a society today where individuals working at minimum wage jobs might well be working full time, but they're never getting ahead. We live in a society today where minimum wage is not a living wage. We also live in a society today where we don't see an equality of opportunity for the ability to rise. Uh, we were speaking this morning in Eureka, and one of the comments that I made there is that during the economic downturn that we saw back in 2008, we experienced a tremendous sense of shared sacrifice where everyone sort of pitched in and did their part. Everyone did what they had to do because we were struggling at that time. And now we're starting to see the beginnings of growth. We're starting to see you know, job creation overall. We're starting to see an improvement in, uh, in economic stats, but it's very much uneven. 
it's not across the board, and certainly in this district, it's not all the counties in this district that are experiencing that. So one of the things that we need to do in this campaign, one of our highest priorities must be jobs, jobs, jobs. We need to make sure that we can create opportunities for individuals to find success in their communities, to find work. I had conversations with individuals a few weeks ago, some, some grandparents who were very, very concerned because they see their grandkids going off to school and leaving the small towns that they live in. We see communities that are constantly being hollowed out. One of the ways that we can change that is by making sure that we leverage the assets that we have, utilize the resources that we have, provide modern technology so that jobs and training can be made available to people where they are, so they can find jobs where they are, so that our communities can survive. One of the things that we want to do, uh, and, and I've made this one of my priority issues in the campaign, we can create jobs here in the counties in western Illinois through infrastructure projects, through highway and bridge improvements and development, and a new initiative in particular. Let me explain that one. Uh, many of you might well be aware that when Interstate 72 was first proposed many years ago, the concept of Interstate 72 was that it was going to run across central Illinois, it was also going to run across northern Missouri, and it was going to connect with the Kansas City area. Now, today, Interstate 72 runs to Quincy, Hannibal area, sort of stops, dead ends there. It was never completed across northern Missouri. Just imagine for a second the economic benefit that the western counties of Illinois would accrue if Interstate 72 was completed across northern Missouri. Jobs in terms of building the project, jobs in the aggregate industry, but at the same time, imagine how many new jobs, how many small businesses could be established in that corridor if you had an amazing amount of traffic that was crossing right through this particular region. Now, we can do that sort of thing if members of Congress are willing to work with others, work across party lines, to make people realize that this is a growth potential, a jobs creation program for this area that can be tremendous in its capacity to create opportunity. Uh, by the way, the congressman who serves the northern Missouri district currently serves on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee of the House. So I would imagine that he would be quite supportive of such a project. And if the congressman of the 18th Illinois lent his support, and if other congressmen from the state of Illinois realize that this benefits Chicago, St. Louis in the long run, because you're alleviating traffic congestion in those areas as well, there's potential job creation that's built into this. Now that's not a revolutionary kind of concept. All it takes is looking at a map and trying to think with a sense of visionary thinking, analytical reasoning. How do you put things in place that can make a difference? One of the things that we hope to do in this campaign, starting within two weeks, is we will be releasing a new policy statement each week. We'll be putting this out on our social media sites, on our website. We'll also be sending this to media throughout the district. Uh, if we do this from the beginning of June until the time of the election in November, we'll have an opportunity to put 20 proposals out there. I would imagine the time that we put 20 proposals out, Congressman Hood will probably put out none. But we will be arguing this campaign on the basis of policy, on the basis of ideas, on the basis of what we can do to make a difference in this community. Now we know that it's been a long time that the Republican Party has held this seat. In, in the county where I reside, in Woodford County, it's exactly 100 years. You have to go all the way back to 1916 when you had a, the, the last Democratic congressman, a fellow named Claudius Ulysses Stone, who, by the way, was an educator. There's a pattern here. 100 year cycle. 100 year cycle. Sort of like the locust, the, yeah. the very slow locust. In other parts of the district, it's been 50 years that the Republican Party has dominated this seat. One of the ideas that I would put forward is this. No single party can claim to have a monopoly on the ideal policy issues for any particular district for 50 years, much less 100. No party can claim to have a monopoly on putting forward the best and the most ideal candidates in every election cycle. And we know that because we have at least a two-year memory. No party should be able to claim superiority over another in that context. One of the things that I'm doing is I'm running as a centrist 
Democrat. I'm running as a person who says it's possible to work across the aisle. And in my lifetime, I've made every effort.